When working with decimals, there are a few ways to set up a division problem with uh, numbers that have decimals in them. Sometimes the decimal is in the dividend. Sometimes the decimal is in the divisor. It could be in both, or perhaps they're both whole numbers, but you get a decimal remainder. I'm going to make a series of videos that will give examples for each kind. In this example, we have uh, problems in which the dividend has a decimal point and the divisor is a whole number. We're going to set it up as a division problem like we would similarly with whole numbers. The dividend goes under the division sign and the divisor is on the outside. Now when the dividend has a decimal point, we're going to bring it up to the quotient. So we're just bringing it up so that it's visible when we calculate the quotient. Now I'm going to ignore it. Then I'll divide the 2 into what looks like 36. 2 does go into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. And like with whole numbers, I'm going to find the difference and bring down the next digit. 2 goes into 16 exactly 8 times. So I'm going to bring up that 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And my difference is 0. Now, because there are no other digits after this 6, I'm going to be done with the calculation. My answer is going to be 1 and 8 tenths. Let's do another example. Here we have 14 and 4 tenths divided by 9. And so I'm going to rewrite it to look like this. 9 goes into 14 one whole time. I'm going to take the difference between the two. I get 5. And oh, looks like I needed to move that decimal point up. Bring down the 4. 9 times 6 will give me 54. Again, I came to 0, and there are no other digits to work out or bring down. So my answer is 1 and 6 tenths. Now, when we're working with money, sometimes our decimal point will go beyond that hundreds place. So we're going to do a little rounding. Let's do an example. Let's say we have $6.99, and we're going to divide that by 36. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my dollar sign and my decimal point. Now I'm going to divide, and I'm going to basically ignore that decimal point. 36 does not go into 6, but it will go into 69 at least one time. 1 times 36 is 36, and I'm going to subtract. 9 take away 6 is 3, and 6 take away 3 is 3. I'm going to bring down the next digit, which is a 9. Now, I'm not sure how many times 36 goes into 339. I think it will be probably 9 times because it's close to 360. That would be 10 times. I'm going to do a little math on the side. 36 times 9. That's going to be 54. Carry the 5. That's going to be 27 plus 5 is 32. So 32 is slightly less than 339, or 324 is less than 339. So I'm going to put a 9 here and subtract 324. 
Now I will get a difference of 15. And when we get to this point, what we're going to do is plug in a zero at the end of our last digit and bring that down. And now we're going to try to figure out how many times 36 goes into 150. And again, I'm going to do a little guess and check. Um, I know that if I were to round this to 40, 40 will go into 164 times. So it's either going to be 3 or 4. I'm going to guess 4 because this is less than 40, but it could be 3. So let's just do a little math on the side. 36 times 4. Okay, so we're going to get 144, and that's four times. Now, because I'm working with money, and I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, I'm not going to do any more, um, you know, dividing. I don't need to bring any more zeros down. And the reason is, is because I'm rounding to the nearest hundreds place. So if we look at our number, 194 thousandths, this 9 is in the hundreds place. And remember that when we're rounding numbers or decimal numbers, we need to identify the digit we want to round to, and then look to the digit to the right of that number. So this 4 tells me that I'm not going to change this 9 to a 10. I'm going to keep it, and so that means I'm going to drop this 4, and I'm left with 19 cents. Now I could put a 0 here as a placeholder, or I could write it as 19 cents, or that symbol there. All of these are going to refer to the same amount.